Hey everybody, Joe with Bumbling Acres here. I hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to talk about homesteading and criticism. Um, if you've read Joel Salatin's books, if you've followed The Roads, even uh, Roots and Refuge, I mean, Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, I mean, if you follow any homesteader, now it's an interesting thing in the world because growing your own food has become countercultural. So you're already countercultural when you agree to grow your own food because only farmers do that in this day and age. So you're already kind of counterculture anyway. So people from you know urban environments who will look at you like you are either get that condescending like that's cute, or you get people that think you're absolutely insane. That's just how it goes. And you kind of expect that from rural people. You expect that from people that have never grown anything. That the idea of growing something would seem ludicrous to them. And it just does. I mean, that's the only thing. Like, they think it's crazy, and you just have to accept the fact that they think you're crazy. So the, the, that criticism is kind of easy to shrug off because you go, well, shit, it's what I want to do, so I'm going to grow, and I'm going to be a homesteader, and you just won't like it. Okay, you just don't like it. Voila. The other type of criticism you're going to run into, and this one's a little bit harder, and it's a little bit... For, maybe maybe I need to self-describe this as it's harder for me. Maybe that Maybe that'll make this... A little bit easier. It's harder for me. And I'm going to do an example of it. Um, we live out in, like, we're not out. In, we're out in a pretty rural area at this point. Um, definitely not urban. Definitely, like, to me, I don't think of it as farm country because it's still a lot of plots. There's a neighborhood within, like, a five-minute drive of me. So this isn't out in rural country land. So I could almost say we're rural but not country. Maybe that's the best way to put it. And out in here, my neighbors have all lived here for decades. My neighbor who has the elk farm, which you can see the fence up behind me, and the elk farm, he's lived here for probably uh, his whole lifetime. And this piece of property we bought from the previous owner had been a part of her family line since the Civil War. And we have, um, we have the land grants that go back before even then, we have land grants that go back to the Illinois land purchase on this property and when it was debbied up and acred off. So it's been in the same family forever. The people across the street, been in their line forever. Caddy Corners, been there since the 70s. Um, I think they are, like next to us would be the next and earliest. Like they've been here for 30 years, 40 years. So, you know, I, I, it's important. We are definitely the new kids on the block. My neighbor raises elk. And my neighbor, when we talked about, when we met, because I, I wanted to walk around and meet our neighbors. Uh, I'm old school in that regard. You move into a place, you should introduce yourself to the people around you. And I walked around, and within like five minutes talking, he's a kind of rough and tough old country fella. And, you know, I was like, yeah, we're going to grow chickens. He goes, you can't grow chickens out here. Coyotes just eat them all. That's all that will happen. Can't grow them. No point. Just a waste of money, waste of time. You know, and I'm like, well, we're, we're going to. And he goes, okay, well, right, don't worry. That's what it's going to be. You know, and I went, we're going to raise turkeys. Waste of time. All you're going to do is just, just you know, all you're going to do is feed the coyotes. That's all it is. It's a waste of time. When we were doing out of Eden gardening style, and we had gotten like the 10 tons of wood chips that dropped off one day, his response, yeah, that's just a waste of time. All you're going to do is get, uh, you're just going to get termites. That's it. When we got pigs, uh, you, you can't raise pigs out here. You don't have enough space. You don't have enough. As I showed them the paddock areas I'd set up, that's not going to work. It's just not going to work. You can't raise pigs this way. I've raised pigs. What are you going to do? And it's very much a sign of he's done it. I can't believe I can do it. That criticism is really, really hard to not take really, really personal. I can take the criticism from, from city folk that don't have a clue. It's much tougher for me to take criticism from my old neighbor and not let it affect me and I think it's important I think it's it's one reason why criticism really tests your resolve test your fire test your purpose test your why uh, and it kind of came to a head when our pigs got out the last time because he had said you know you can't keep pigs pigs are waste and I was like, please just keep my pigs on my property you know one of the reasons I sat over in that field for probably two and a half hours in the area the pigs were to keep them was to keep them on my property. So I didn't have to deal with my neighbor. Like, that's stupid. 
I, it's just, but that's criticism. And that's really, really hard to take. The homesteading community itself is one of the most supportive communities I've ever seen in my life. It will give you, offer you hints, tips. They will help you out in any way you possibly can. So when you agree to homestead, you find a homesteading group around you, they will light your fire. They will be your cheerleaders, give you all the advice. You need gear, they'll give you recommendations for gear. If they have old gear, they'll sell it to you or give it to you. Like the homesteading community is great. Neighbor country folk who've done it one way their entire life, um, they're, they're not going to like you. And that's okay. You don't have to be liked. I think it's important you recognize when you agree to go to homesteading that not everyone's going to think this is the greatest thing on, in the world. And the people that you figure would be supportive aren't going to be. Because you're not doing it their way. That's criticism. And that's criticism you're going to have to take as a homesteader. To get used to the fact that find your support structures, build your support structures. Don't expect your support structures to find you. Don't expect to just chub along into this lifestyle and suddenly everyone's going to come around and be your cheerleader. You're going to deal with some harsh critics and some of it's valid. You know, my, my neighbor's advice is warranted. If I did not have a uh, chicken coop, I, I, I didn't... Um, well, the chicken thing was silly because chickens don't roam that far and you have a coop and they'll be fine. You know, all these other different areas. Um, if I just let my animals wander free, yeah, they'd get eaten by coyotes. We do have a coyotes that come along the property line. I had a livestock guardian dog to help with that. We got a big, big Great Pyrenees that takes care of the animals that, at night. Have them up, barks, coyotes don't come on our property. Like, so it's not that they're wrong, it's just, and maybe that's the best way to handle criticism. Take the positive from it, take the learn from it, and you gotta discard the rest. You gotta wash it off your back. And if you can't handle criticism, I would say you need to check your security level in general because people are always going to criticize you. You don't deserve not to be critic, not to be critiqued. All of us do. But take the good, push forward, do your best, learn, you'll be fine. So, homesteading, handling criticism. At least this is what I do, and this is what works for me. So. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you're having a great day. Joe with Bumblenake here signing off. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share some of our videos. Ask us some questions. You know, whatever you, whatever's going on. Share, share what's going on in your life, by the way. I'd like to hear. So we just had some ducks that were born. Uh, duck eggs that are hatching right now. So I'll get some videos of that probably tomorrow. We've put our ducks and egg layers out to, out to our, actually it's our meat bird tractor. I've got them in now. So they're on grass right now. And that's going well. Our meat birds are... They're probably another week or two away from going out to grass, but we're going to do what we can there. So I hope you all are doing well. I hope this message finds you happy and healthy. I'll do an update over the weekend that will cover more of what's going on. So bye.